All right, so welcome back. Welcome back, everybody, um, to Dollars Arcade. Today, we're going to take a listen and a have a little conversation against my relatively new 1010 Music uh, Nano Box Lemon Drop. Okay, turn this down a little bit. So this is my uh, granular synth. It's tiny, absolutely tiny. Um, for reference, here is a some kind of iPhone. I can't remember which one. So um, it's one of the new ones. That's all I know. Not the cheapest one. Not the biggest one. I'm not that impressed by. Um, phones i'm not one of these guys that oh my gosh you got that new phone no this however um i am impressed by um i'm a gear guy but i like gear that is more niche more collectible um less let me take out my gum bad video making um chewing gum makes for bad bad conduct when you're making a youtube video so i'm going to take that out so, yeah, so what I'm saying is basically I like products that are well-made, that have a specific purpose, that uh, hold their value, that is a little bit more rare. You know, I treat it more as a collectible or as a workhorse, as in the case with the MC707. But the phones, you know, we, um, we have them all the time. They're, we do everything on them. Sure, you can make music, you can make videos on your phones, you can... Um, you can uh, pretty much do everything on your phones, communicate, do everything except make a phone call these days, pretty much, right? Um, of course, that's not the case. You can still make phone calls, but who does? Anyway, so the lemon drop. This bad boy here is a granular synth. Granular synthesis is based on sound samples that you put inside, right? Um, and the synth chops it up into tiny little grains. And that's what you see here. I even like this set, this uh, sound a little bit better. And then you change your parameters, how loud it is, the levels, whether you want it beat synced. Density is a cool one. And the grain size, we can make those grains really large or rather, see that it's just I want a more full sound to go up to 100%. Window is where you take it from left to right. And again, this is not a tutorial, but this is about um, granular synthesis. And I like granular synthesis because it does a great job with pads, with textures. It does a great job with, um, it does a great job with, uh, um, Playing with samples in a way that's unconventional um, from regular sampling. Um, nevertheless, it is a synthesizer, um, and it's one of what three or four synths that uh, hardware synths that I know do granular synthesis. I don't know if there's too much to say about this other than I really like it. Um, everything is. This is the SD card, micro SD card. It is. It comes with sounds and samples up to 30 seconds long uh if you really want to have fun you load some voices that, that uh, are not like whole held notes you want to get some variety in there so when you chop when the uh, granular synth does its thing it has some places to jump around and create a lot of good texture you got your line in um line out your clock in clock out your midi in um i'm sorry midi in midi out and clock in and then you have your usb power um 1010 music has a bad um history of not fully fully utilizing the usb-c port not fully integrating it this should just be this usb-c port should be for sound power and midi but for whatever reason um midi is only done through the hardware then you got to get your sound in so what should be a very tiny 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 setup especially since this doesn't have an internal battery so now you need to power it too um it makes it it gets pretty big pretty quickly um nevertheless it is still a space saving device it's very good at what it does 
I do not regret buying it. I'm going to keep it, which means I've got to take off this plastic. I have a bad habit whenever I'm undecided, but it's been a while and I've decided to keep this bad boy. Um, my history with 1010 Music, I used to have the 1010 Music black box, which is the sampler. It's a little bit larger. It's about this big, I want to say, about that big, right? It's about that big comparatively, right? So the top of the top of the nano box all the way across. All right, so about from here to here and from top of the screen to the bottom of my thumb or the top of my thumb. So, um, but the black box was so fun. And one of the reasons it was fun was these, the knobs, it was so like, it, it <sighs> I sound silly, but the knobs were just quality and they retained those same knobs here. Um, I don't want to do a whole bunch of clicking because that gets annoying on my microphone. Um, so maybe I can make a presentation of just uh, demonstrating the audio separately. But I just wanted to have a conversation about why you would want something like this. If you have a mono synth, like the Dreadbox Typhon that I love so much, and you plug it into here, into the audio in, you would end up with four voices of polyphony, of granular sound from the Dreadbox. So, or from any other synth, from the NTS-1, from the any, any other mono synth you can think of, or polysynth too, but it'll only give you a max of four voices if you're using the uh, nano box to trigger the sounds. Of course, if you have a polysynth that has like eight voice or something like hydrosynth with six voices or something, or a Dreadbox Nymphies or something like that, you could use play that and process the sound through here, but you wouldn't really be getting the granular um, effect. Um, you'd just be using this as a compressor and reverb, delay, chorus, flanger, um, all of which it has in here. Uh, some people say it's not the best effects that they've heard, but the compressor alone, I've got to tell you, I really enjoy having a compressor, especially uh, in the sense that for most synths, you don't need a compressor because everything is very controlled in the electronic environment of a synthesis of sound, sound design. But when you're layering sounds, compressors really do help and it, it really fills up, um, makes the sounds less harsh. It gives it a little bit of control. You can't tweak it too much. But 1010 Music is so good at their firmware updates, I gotta tell you, they're so good at their firmware updates that I wouldn't be surprised if they uh, eventually allowed you some degree of control over the compressor settings, threshold ratio, and stuff like that. Nevertheless, um, these guys are doing big things. I love their products. Um, this is my second product by them. I really was tempted to get the black box again, but I decided to go with this because the black box does have a granular synth with it. However, it's only one voice. Um, this is four, and it has a lot more specialty tools in, in the lemon drop than it does the black box. The cousin to this, there's two other ver um, nano boxes that are currently out. There's the uh, Fireball, I think it is. It's a wavetable synth. It's a little bright sounding for me. But it's eight voice, I believe. And it's just this small, which makes it convenient. It's a powerhouse. It has two oscillators. This has two sample slots. Let me see if I can pull it up. Two sample slots um, that you can input stuff in. And then it has a third oscillator, which is a sine, square, pulse wave, um, you know, saw triangle, uh, the basic to fill out the bottom, you know, to give it, give it some, um, some fullness. If your samples you're using are not completely up to, up to filling the sound spectrum, if you're using this for a pad by itself, but this is great for ambient. This is great for sound design for, uh, lo-fi for synth wave. I would think, um, I, you know, you gotta be creative with your tools. You know, you can't have every tool in the toolkit. I guess some people can, but I can't, I can't quite yet afford all of that. Um, anyway, but aside from the Lemon Drop, the Fireball, there's also the Razzmatazz, which is a FM drum sith, which I think would work well for the guys here in, uh, the, the guys in South Africa that are doing Ama Piano because it's FM synthesis, right? And that's the basis for the log drum that is so popular in modern Ama Piano. So the Razzmatazz is a drum machine. I think it has a snare kick, you know, hi-hat cymbals, uh, open hi-hat, closed hi-hat um, clap or something like that. And you can design all the sounds 
Also, you can import your own sounds. So there's samples that you can import, or import as well. I wanted it. It never arrived. So I had to cancel the order, um, which might have been a blessing in disguise because it doesn't currently have the best reviews out there. Um, probably because there's only one audio out. Um, I think for a machine like a drum machine like that, you would want more audio out options like the black box has where it has four audio out stereo out options, I believe. Nevertheless, right, you know, uh, as far as the lemon drop goes, this is the best model out of the, of the three right now. This is their work. This is the one that's um, that's selling the best with the highest reviews because it's so niche niche. Um, there are a lot of wavetable synths out there, I guess, uh, relatively speaking to granular synths and FM synthesis, uh, for a drum machine. There are a lot, there are a few options, you know, um, I, I personally think the Razzmatazz has, has the, has the capacity to really take off, but for the sake of not making this video too long, I just wanted to go ahead and, uh, I guess we'll finish the video with, uh, playing with the sounds a little bit and I'll go ahead and stop talking and, uh, hope you guys enjoy um, but this is, this is my, um, yeah, this is my, I have fun with my textures. So hope you guys enjoy like, and subscribe Dallas arcade away. Oh,